Hello, I'm Giselle, and this is my channel, Dizzy Doggo, where I authentically and awkwardly share my life with you. In this video, I will be doing so by sharing a little bit about Jacob Lawrence and his work, the Vibration series, but I'm especially going to be sharing my connection to this work. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll also be sharing some prompts to maybe help you begin sharing your own connection to Jacob Lawrence's work and sharing a little bit about your life. Jacob Lawrence is an artist that was making work towards the end of the Harlem Renaissance and, and onwards. The Harlem Renaissance is a period of time from around the 1910s to the 1930s where there was just a lot of art and music. It was a vibrant time of cultural production um, in Harlem here in New York City. And this revival was influenced largely by the influx of Black migrants from the South during the Great Migration, which also began in the 1910s. Jacob Lawrence himself was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey, so up here in the North, um, in 1917, but he was the child of migrants. In 1940, Jacob Lawrence began his famous series of 60 paintings, which he called The Migration of the Negro, and now it's more commonly referred to as the Migration Series. He was my age, 23, when he started this project, which is kind of wild to think about because it has such a lasting legacy and it makes me think about what my own legacy might be, but I digress. This really great video, which I'll put in the description, Lawrence says of the Great Migration. At the beginning of my understanding of communication with words, I was very much aware of this movement. I was far removed from the culture I knew, but yet I was very close to it, through my mother and through her friends. This made me think of this idea that I've reflected on for a long time in my own artistic practice, is this idea of inheriting memories, which I'm not sure if I heard that somewhere or if I made that up. If I did make that up, I should probably copyright it because I think that's very clever. It's very artistic. Maybe I'm an artist. Um, gosh, I should remove that. <laughs> okay, so one more time. <laughs> it's this idea that like everyone has stories that we've gotten from our family members, from our elders, from the people who have had an impact in our lives. And those memories, we internalize them and make them our own. Even though I didn't personally experience that thing, I think my my memory of it, my version of it, is just as valid as someone who actually experienced it. And I want to be careful with that. I don't know if it's just as valid, but I don't know. I, I guess I don't have an answer, but I just think it's something that's interesting to me. That I have all these images in my mind that I can conjure up even though I didn't experience them myself. And so Jacob Lawrence actually talks about something really similar in that video where he shares that he had actually never seen cotton before, like the cotton plant. And so when he was making one of the pieces in the series, he had to just kind of like guess what it looked like, guess what these like insects look like. And I think that just reflects that he wasn't really intending to maybe capture anything scientifically accurate or historically accurate. It was more so about depicting a connection to this thing. I don't think in terms of history in that series. I think in terms of contemporary life. It was such a part of me I didn't think of something outside, that I was doing a portrait of something. If it was a portrait, it was a portrait of myself, a portrait of my family, a portrait of my peers. That's what it was a portrait of. It was such a subjective part of me, such a subjective statement, a subjective feeling I had about this content. So he's looking at this idea of history as something that's vague and broad, and he's saying, no, this isn't just this abstract idea. History is something that is deeply, deeply personal. This is super relevant to be thinking about in this current moment that we're living in. We are so aware that this is a historical moment and we 
are just trying to navigate what our place in all of this is. And I think that's what Jacob Lawrence is trying to do as well, is just trying to navigate what his place in history is. So let's look at one of his paintings and actually dive deep into how he actually communicates these ideas. First, we'll start with just some observations, thinking about some formal observations. What what are we actually looking at? And then there's, so there's 60 in the whole series. <laughs> this is so bad. I'm linking it from now on. The first half you can tell was very scripted. This half is not because I want it to be just like an actual, I want to experience this with you of just approaching this work and just going off these like raw observations. So this work is the 30th panel in the series, which is right smack in the middle. And each image had a caption that accompanied it. So the caption for this one says, in every Southern home, people met to decide whether or not to go North. The first thing I notice is that there's a lot of brown, which again, this is like very obvious, but I think just getting all these really obvious things out of the way is important. So it's brown. I see a lot of texture. There's a group of figures sitting or standing around a table and someone is pouring a glass of water or something and there's an empty plate on the table as well um the three people who are sitting seem kind of like they're like hunched over the table and there's just kind of like a heaviness um to their bodies there's a lot of lines that kind of like bring you back to the back of this room that we're in like this like really forced perspective where things are just you're kind of just like thrust it into this space and then there's this plant or what appears to be a plant I'm, I'm not really sure what kind of plant it is it looks like a snake plant to me but maybe i'm projecting because i have a bunch of snake plants and because they're the only plant that i can keep alive yeah so i guess those are like this is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm seeing in the scene. So now I'm going to make some observations about how I'm feeling um, in response to looking at this work. Maybe it's like a little tense. The only movement that I really feel is again like the the room itself feels like it's um, you're like being forced into it somehow. It's weird because it like it opens up as it comes towards the front of the image, but then everything gets really compressed in the back end of the image. There's like energy that's being contained in one spot. And then that plant though in the corner just really throws me off, I'm not gonna lie. Cause it really just disrupts that. Um, but I guess it also like reminds, it reminds me that like, that nature still exists, that there's still an outdoor space everything feels really closed off from the natural environment. There's also this sense of like despair, you know, because of the emptiness, because of the lack of windows, um, that empty plate that we're seeing, I keep going back to that empty plate. I think all these like lines that are happening um, keeps my eyes going like up and down. And I think also because there's two there's two points of focus. There's the people huddled in that corner, and then there's that plant in the foreground. So I think my eye just keeps going back and forth as well, like just forward and backward, forward and backward, which I guess makes sense because the caption says that they're deciding whether or not to go north. So I think that this feeling of like going back and forth actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe I'm pushing into it. Looking at this space also makes me think of the family home that we have on our land in the Dominican Republic, like the inherited land that we have. Speaking of inheritance, it just makes me remember like being in that house and just wondering like, oh wow, like all of my family was, lived here at one point and they had to have these difficult conversations. So now I'm just gonna share like a quick prompt that's just not a way to like get ideas flowing. It's not going to be so much like how to make an art object. It's more so like how to get your ideas composed and like come up with what you even want to talk about. We have all inherited memories. Try and remember a major life event or period of time 
that impacted someone close to you? What might daily life have looked like? What might daily life? Whoa, why is this such a tongue twister? What might daily life have looked like for them during it? Think about mood, rhythm, and texture. Let your thoughts flow without censoring them and fill in any gaps in memory with your own imagination. So if I had to answer this, since I'm already thinking about it, I would say inherited memories that I have are of from my grandma and my dad as well. Thinking about like childhood on that farm would be the period of time that I would want to focus on. And if I had to think about what daily life might have looked like for them. Something that I remember um, both of them share with me is that my great grandfather every morning would make this like giant batch of tea. Like he, he would just make like a huge pot of tea. So I just like imagine him like waking up super early and just like going out and gathering these things. And I'm really interested in like doing research about all this stuff. So I remember what my aunt, my grandma's sister, I remember asking her like, what are some natural remedies that like you guys would consume? And she was like, you know, we never really got sick. Like we just were really healthy all the time. And she was like, honestly, I think it's because we just, everything that we ate was medicinal. And so it was like, we were preventing getting sick instead of having to treat it. So I guess just like this feeling of being surrounded by nature and not just surrounded by it, but being connected to what you're consuming. I would say the mood is just like peaceful. I just imagine like so much peace and joy and like, it just feels like you're connected to something. And I think that the feeling of being connected is almost like it's not a feeling, if that makes sense, because you're just in it, you're just present. You're not thinking about being connected you just are like you're just harmoniously living in it like it nourishes you and you nourish it back and it's just i don't know you're not worried about things so much rhythm i would say i imagine kind of like a steady repetition or like cyclical i think a lot about how um being connected to nature is also like using nature to tell time. Like my great grandfather, he, there's so many like phrases that he used to say. I don't remember him, but all of these uh, inherited memories that I have for my family members. And there's one that I think about a lot where he would say, you know, it's midday when you're standing on your head. And basically what that means is like your shadow, like you're standing on your own shadow. Just imagine the sun shining right above him and this cyclical pattern of like the sun rising and setting and just starting a new day again so i guess if i did make some sort of image like in the jacob lawrence painting it was going back and forth back and forth right you were pull being pulled in and out in and out whereas i think i would want something that feels more like your eye is just like going around the page and then if i had to think about texture i just think about the air for some reason like the wind like it, i want it to feel warm but also like there's a breeze maybe like there's just movement like gentle movement maybe there's not like harsh like nothing feels harsh like everything just feels soft and like everything blends into itself which also kind of relates to this idea that I had about feeling like everything's interconnected. Like maybe if everything is just kind of blurs together in a way, um, it would, maybe it would capture that. I'm just kind of brainstorming here. So yeah, I guess, I guess I'll share with you whatever I end up making in the next video. So stay tuned. And if you make anything, you can email it to me. And I can also share it in the next video if you want. In the meantime, you can also share your life with us in the comments too. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you and connecting with you. And I hope that this was interesting to you in some way. <laughs> um, yeah, so 
Thank you for watching. I'm so over this. <laughs>